Have you ever been in a store and thought, I can make that? Well, that's literally what happened to me. There was a set of blocks, colored blocks, and I thought, wow, this is so cool. They have all these different sides with lots of different things, so you can make any design that you want. And I thought, I know where I can get some wooden blocks. Let me try this out. So all I started to do was I took the blocks and I took some paint markers and I just started coloring them. So far, so good, right? So I kind of did it a little bit randomly. I tried to limit myself to a limited palette. I chose yellow, blue, red, black, and white because I figured that would make it easier. And then I decided to limit myself to the shapes I was doing as well to make them really simple things that would go with everything. So triangles, plain. And you can see that I'm drawing my triangle right with the delicate tip of the marker and then I'm gonna color it in with the broader chisel tip so that I can really cover that surface really quickly. I didn't worry about priming anything because honestly these are opaque and that just seemed like a lot of work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then do the background in. And anytime you're a little scared that you might overlap and obviously create orange, then that's when I switch from the big tip down to the little tip. But the one exception to that is with white. So there were a couple places because I wanted to be able to do eyes and stuff like that where I decided that I could just color in the block. And you can see I'm using the black on this to color it all the way in. And then I wanted to make sure that I had a super duper opaque all the way white. So I'm actually switching the kind of paint marker I'm using. There are lots of different kinds of paint markers, just like there's lots of different kinds of paint. So this is the kind that you have to shake. You hear the ball mixing it up in there. And then you want to have a scrap piece of paper and you want to push down the tip until you can see that the ink is flowing. So what you want to do is make sure that you use Use it just like this, easy enough. And you can see how opaque that is and it covers that black right up and I have my little eye. Now I made a chart for you, which will be on the website, and it just shows the different shapes that I made. You can see I have triangle, sort of a half square. I'm calling this a doorway, but it works really well for like a dog's tongue or anything like that. Some plain colors, I think of these as teeth, and you can see them in the little dog right here. Some um, half triangles, if you wanna call it that, if you're from quilting, a raised triangle, raised half circle, sort of quarter circle, all kinds of things, and then this is my color palette. Now, I put the numbers below, meaning I have four of these, three of these, 23 of these. You can do it any way you want. It was just a guide if you were looking for a place to start. So let me show you how it works. Obviously, I have the design here, but I can mess it up. And I can just start to play if I want to do something abstract or real. So for instance, this obviously says eyes to me. So I'm ready to make some eyes. And then if you want to make a nose, you know, it could be sort of a beaky nose. We can make an owl or something like that. Um, and if I wanted to separate, let's say the nose from the mouth. And again, I'm just playing around and seeing what happens. I can do that and I just keep flipping. Maybe I want the mouth to be really long and I just keep flipping them around to see if I can find something that will do that for me. And you can have it have sort of a lot of attitude, whiskers, think about it any way you want. The plain sides are really useful for building up spacers essentially so that you focus on the design that you want the viewer's eye to focus on. You can see just like that, we can use these colored pieces as spacers. And then the other fun thing is some of these shapes make bigger shapes. So for instance, if I want to take those two half, those two quarter circles, they make a half circle. And then if I find another, oh, here you go. You can take this half circle and you can pair it up with another half circle to make a circle. And you can add that, let's say you want the cheek actually to come in here and be sort of rosy. You can do it that way. But you're just playing around with this to see what's fun. And you'll find that both kids and adults love the fun of putting together a puzzle because that's essentially what this is, is a puzzle that never runs out. It's really easy to do. I'm making a really creepy little owl. I kind of like it, I have to tell you. So let's make the nose come up this way. Adds in some other pieces. 
And you know, you can always color over anything. You don't even have to use all the blocks. You can stop right there or you can finish out your design as you would like. Now, I have some designs here. I like this little monster face very much, actually. Super cute, big rosy cheek, small rosy cheek, lots of good stuff. So you can see here, I have a whole bunch of different faces because I love faces. Some are more abstract, some are more real. There's a snake, there's even the letter J for Julie. Sort of a clown face and then a completely abstract design. As an artist, one of the things that I'm really interested in doing is creating sketches. And this is kind of a fun way of creating a sketch, but with blocks. So one of the things that I often do is use the solid pieces, particularly around the edges, as you can see, to focus in, but you can go all the way to the edge, whatever it is that you want. So this is an easy and fun way to make blocks even better.